Yo, 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 what is going on, IK Familia? Your boy, Beat Hen, Mr. Kingdom Builder. We are back again for another dope sauce, dope of the Infinity Kingdom video. Cannot tell you how excited I am today to drop some more of that edumacation and information. Okay, what are we going to talk about today? We are going to touch on the importance of understanding the type of server that you should be joining as a player. It doesn't matter if you're a new player or you're an existing player, if you've never played a Kingdom Builder before or if you've played a bunch, right? We're going to talk about the difference between a new server, an old server, and then we're also going to touch on more specifically uh, the impact that jumping and the idea of making jumper accounts slash groups projects also has on the impact for players deciding what to do in the beginning, right? Or even after they get some information. Before we jump in, as usual, make sure you guys sub, hit that like button, turn that notification bell on so you can get updates when we have new content coming out and you don't miss. Okay. Biggest, and I'm going to break this down extremely simple. In short, as a player, your primary focus when you are playing Kingdom Builders is to progress your account. That is what every player wants to do. You want to hit T5, you want to get Max Castle, you want to get Max Academy Tech, you want to try and get to Max VIP eventually, you want to have a Max March, a Max Character Skill, right? All the good stuff, right? This is what every player is working towards at, at just a baseline minimum. Beyond that, it then depends on what you want as an individual player. Do you want a? Do you want to join a server where you're going to be able to freely develop your account the fastest way possible that you can, and then you can choose on what you want to participate in? Do you want to join a server where you can develop your account, but then they do server-wide PvP, so you have the risk of that? Do you want to join a server where they do server-wide PvP, but maybe they have a couple safe zones that you can go to, but then you're forced to move? How do you feel about that? Do you want to join a server that just does nothing but war all the time? Right, You have to figure out what you want as as an individual. My preference, and this is what I really feel the majority want and really should be looking for, is that, and again, this is albeit the warmongers, if you will, right? Got love for you guys too. But really, I, I feel the majority is looking for a server that is unified. They can develop 100% as fast as they can. They don't do server-wide PvP, and instead they do they do uh, kill events within like a forbidden zone or within like a zone three or within a small area that is not the majority of the map, right? And that allows for players to choose what they want to participate in without taking that choice away or creating an action or an extra step that they have to take, in which they really shouldn't have really shouldn't have to, in my opinion, right? But again. As always, you have to find what you want as a player. And that really comes down to you doing research. Now, where can you do research to find out what type of servers that you want to go to? And specifically, right, where do you want to play in? Because these are really important things that you need to be able to figure out as it really comes down to, you know, like we've, like, again, the big things that we always talk about is... As an individual, right, it is for your longevity and sanity at the end of the day because you don't want to make an account in a new server and you have no idea where that server is going and you're playing there for a month, two months, three months, and then you end up re-rolling, if not sooner than that, or you restart, or let's say you restart, and then after you restart, you're like, okay, I'm going to do this again, but the same thing happens, right? And maybe you just uninstall at that point. So these are things that, again, are really important to have a good understanding of. And an example of where you can go to find this information is you can go and check out our spreadsheet, right? And we are actually going to be updating this even more. But this is a spreadsheet. Once I get done adding the first 18 servers, we'll have this up to 26. And you can go on here and just get a nice overview, right? A spotlight, if you will, on what these servers have to offer. Right, and it can be anything from you know what their current alliance power is, uh, what their distribution is for power. I think we'll eventually add something in here for how many 
uh, like the highest, like the top five alliance levels that they have, if it's like 10, 10, 9, 9, or maybe top six alliances, we'll do something like that because I think that information would also be good. But this is where you can go and again, we'll have a link to that in the description down below so you can check that out. If you want to go and look, you can also look at how kingdom rules are. There was a little tab over there and it kind of shows you what their kingdom rules are if they have those listed publicly and we've been able to find that out. Or even if you are someone and you're watching this video and let's say you're in one of these servers, right? You're more than welcome to let me know. You can DM me on Discord. Um, or uh, again, I would say that's probably recommended. Otherwise, you could leave a comment. And if I catch it on the video, right, then I'll update that uh, for any of the columns that you want to provide information for. But start somewhere is the point and get a good grasp on where you want to go. Now let's talk into kind of the pros and cons. So pros and cons, if you go to a new server, right, you're going to be able to play the game from day one and you will be able to get a couple challenge event rewards from playing early on. That is pretty much the only things you would be missing out on if you did not join a new server from day one. Now, in an existing server, let me talk about some of what I feel are amazing benefits that a lot of players really miss out on. And I wish that if I knew this information when I first started playing Kingdom Builders, I would have done this the exact same way. I would have made an account in an already established server, and then I would have, or right, so I would have done it one of two. I would have done it one of two ways, right? I would have started playing an account first, and I would have learned what I could learn about the game. Whether it took me a couple days, it took me a week or two. I'd start out a new server just to learn. I wouldn't want to sit there for too long. After I felt like I had a good grasp, then I would go and look at an older server, one that's established and meets the type of play style that I want to play, that I want to participate in for an existing server. And then if I really cared so much about wanting to play from a new server from day one, then I would just go make a second account, right? Or an alt account to go and play in a server from day one to get that experience. But it's a very short term experience. And it's not, in my opinion, what players really should be looking for. You should be looking to join a server that you are going to be able to get the most out of it. And it's not going to soil, right? It's something that's going to last for the type of server that it is and for what you want as a player. Now, the benefits of joining an older server are amazing. And let me really let me really put this into perspective. So if you join an older server, and I'm just going to give an example here from the account I have right now, right? As an example, this alliance is at alliance level nine, right? I'm going to be able to get brothers in arms, which is where I get help time reductions for each help I get from an alliance member. That is going to boost you so much faster to allow you to get to castle 20 to even 30 because you're getting so many faster helps and more as you level up, and it's gonna help you level up your castle faster. In addition to that, you're gonna be gathering faster from speech. You're gonna be able to carry more of your resources from each of the RSS tiles. You're also gonna have faster AP and SP recovery. This cannot be understated. In addition, you're gonna also get bonuses for your troops. If I go on the territory tab, I'm going to get food tax. I'm going to be able to get uh, decree cooldowns, which means I'm going to benefit from those when they're doing taxes, lower attack costs, AP attacking uh, other enemy cities. So if I ever need to use that for some kind of event or for doing kind of honor trading, you're going to be able to get that and then get access to doing things like late game honor trading. So you can hit your count to that much faster. Again, I'm not going to dive too far into that. Even something like minimize losses is an amazing tech where you take less serious wounded when you fight on Alliance territory. And that can be gnomes, players, right? These are just amazing benefits. In addition to that, you will be able to get access, especially if you're joining an active alliance, you're going to get more consistent alliance credits from them. Because most likely your active alliance is going to be completing these missions. You're going to get higher level gifts. You're also going to get more resources early on, right, from having higher level territory taxes and incomes, right? These are just some of the amazing benefits that you're going to get from joining an older server where you're going to progress your account faster. Now, yes, the one downside, if you even want to call it that from joining an older server, is that you're not going to be as strong as right, the people that have already been there for a decent amount of time. In addition, depending on your status, whether you're free to play or spend, it doesn't matter. You are still going to benefit more when it comes to a cumulative progression for your account in an older server than, a new, than you will ever will in a newer server. 
And especially, again, because the idea here is that you are going to most likely be joining an older server that has an active alliance, you will not have to worry about, oh, well, what if I join an older server and the alliance is inactive? No, you do your research ahead of time, right? As an example, right, when I was playing back in uh, an older server in IK, we constantly promoted people joining an older server, and players would join a month, two months, even after we had the server made. Um, and they were still benefiting a lot more because we took the time to explain to them how they would benefit. And that's really important, right? So now let me transition and I'm going to talk about the jumping portion here. So let me talk about jumpers and the impact that they have when it comes to what you really should be making a jumper account for. Okay, so let's switch over and we're going to talk about if you go on the IK discord, right, you can see here that there is a server slash jumper recruitment section. This is pretty standard for kingdom builders. The important takeaway here is that as a jumper, you really right and this factors into whether or not you're going to play in a brand new server, an older server. If you are deciding whether or not you're going to do a jumper project, you should not be choosing to do a jumper project just to do a jumper project or make a jumper just to do a jumper. It's better for you just to make a brand new account in an older server. The only reason you should ever make a jumper project, and really hear me on this, is if you are looking to go to a server because you want to have majority control slash majority presence and you want to build the server in the way that you feel can benefit the server the I don't know if I'd say the most but just building it in your vision in your way right similar to what I did when I played in when I did my jumper project in S8 and we built the foundation and when we did it in 36 and we built the foundation and then now in server 79 where we built the foundation and things are just flourishing amazingly so that is the only reason you really should ever do a jumper project Right now, if you're going to do a project as an individual alliance and you want to go in there again, I'm not saying don't do that, but keep in mind that there's realistic expectations when you do it that way. One alliance, for the most part, unless you're going to go in there with a bunch of spenders, right, which is similar to I think what we saw happen on. I can't remember if it was S11 or S9, one, one, maybe S13, one of them that had a similar situation where you had a bunch of spenders that came in from another kingdom builder and they just made the number one alliance. And again, when you look, if you go and you look at that server now, right, doing it that way is kind of going with the uh, mega alliance hierarchy structure. In my opinion, I am not a fan of that because I think it does more harm than it does good overall when it comes to player retention and actually keeping activity in a server. So I definitely don't recommend doing that. Again, you really have to think about what you're doing a jumper for, right? And again, the only reason I would ever see, again, for the amount of experience I have doing jumper projects now for almost a year and a half across two different games, right? And the majority of my projects being very successful going on to win their first KVKs or building a good foundation in those servers or kingdoms where they can build off of it and are still long lasting, albeit one that's kind of 50-50, but out of the seven I've done, this is what I have concluded is that you should only be ever making a jumper project if you're going to go in with like, I would say, at least an IK, right? If you're going to go in with three to six alliances, I like six alliances more, <clears throat> right? And you are, and you actually are going to put together a structure. You have a plan. Otherwise, do not do a jumper. Just go join an older server, right? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. The end. All right. That is it for me. I attempted to keep this video as short as possible. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, right? Uh, how do you feel of uh, going for a newer server versus older server, right? Do you see kind of some of the benefits that I'm talking about? Where do you personally feel on that? If you're someone who's done a jumper before and you're now watching this video and you're like, hmm, this guy's making some solid points. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have done my jumper because keep in mind as well, when you do a jumper, you have to prep. Right? In IK, it's different than some other games. You can prep for a month, two months, a year, two years before you ever jump. All that time you've spent building your jumper up, especially if you do not have enough alliances and enough players in your project to give you an overwhelming advantage to really have a majority presence and your players that are joining your project understand why you're even doing all of this in the first place, do not do a jumper. 
Just go join an older server that's already established. You are going to be so much happier, trust me, than if you spend time doing a jumper and it doesn't work out. Right? Because you're when you're doing a jumper, you're not progressing your account. You are capped at Castle 8. And you have to sit there and grind that out for a month, two months, three months, however long you're going to prep it for, where you could have already been four or five times that power in that same amount of time, right, if you go to an older server. Anyway, so that is it for me on my educational rant. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave it to you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And until next time, we'll catch you later.